Today, we're going to be talking about this report that just came out of the New Jersey Crime Commission about the Pagans Motorcycle Club, as well as how law enforcement uses reports from the federal government to go after clubs, just like the Pagans, Mongols, Hells Angels, you name it. This is what they do, and they do it all in secrecy. Coming up. Okay, let's talk about this report. This report was conducted by the New Jersey Crime Commission. It's kind of like the Chicago Crime Commission. They get they keep tabs on organized crime and stuff like that. You get it. Hopefully you get it. And they take their nod from the Department of Justice. And the other day, we talked about their updated guidelines on what an outlaw motorcycle club is. And they passed this out throughout the country. But there's also internal memos that they pass out that all the law enforcement in this country uses. And this right here is what I believe propagates all this profiling stuff. These people do not understand that it is 2021. They still think it's 1970 and 1980. They still can't get over the fact that it's only a few members of a MC that pulls any kind of the crap that they're talking about. The majority, and I'd have to say the super majority, are actually the ones that go to work, work hard all the time, and I'll repeat that time after time after time until it gets in everybody's thick skulls that you cannot judge an entire motorcycle club on the actions of just a few and you're going to come back well you always are bumping on cops and stuff like that here's the difference they can't take an oath to the constitution to uphold the laws of this country so when they go out there just like we were talking about the other day that reggie white jr uh of death row records the one that started all that crap against big Cass because they were competitors he was a compton cop um and they came in that story and i suggest you go watch it over 200 kilos of cocaine walked out of the evidence locker bribery the whole nine yards so yeah, we're going to put a spotlight on something like that compared to what an MC member does because they're supposed to uphold the law. Problem with that is they are on MCs like flies on shit. And it never changes. If you're in one of them designated groups, and I'd have to say, even if you're not, Cops will not leave you alone. That's why I do not understand where you have bikers back in the blue. Are you crazy? The whole thing about being a biker is about being outside of society. I know it's cool to be a biker. I get it. But there are some lines you just do not cross. So let's take a look at this Crime Commission report. Very interesting business here. Very interesting business. And this, again, Organized Crime Spotlight, it's a 22-page report, and it has to do with the rise of the pagans in New Jersey. And, of course, the big headline, Outlaw Motorcycle Gangs. This was from the state of New Jersey's uh, Commission of Investigation, September 2020. This report was done. Now, I believe in uh, previous videos, I covered some of this report, but I wanted it to really zero in on kind of the stuff that they were saying. First, let's go to this one. I want you to see what an internal deal that is put out on clubs is all about. Now, this is an older one. Freedom of Information Act finally came out. 
And as you just see at the top, it says limited official use, law enforcement and uh, sensitive. This was drugs and crime outlaw motorcycle gang profile. These are profiles of the clubs. This one happens to be on the Pagans Motorcycle Club. And as you can see, a lot of this stuff is blacked out. That stuff that they're going to claim is top secret, crap like that, and the public can never see this stuff. Starts out about how uh, the Pagans is a violent criminal organization that, black, 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 it is the black, largest outlaw motorcycle gang in the country, which... Let's see here. Lar well, I can't say that. It probably is one where it's blacked out because if it was, you know, was trying to say that's not the case then, but it is blacked out there, so I have to give them that. Uh, it was. Uh, it has an estimated, and it won't give you the numbers and the chapters, stuff like that. They give a background. How it began is a camaraderie of 13 motorcyclists. That was in 59 when it started out. The 60s, their association established a former motorcycle club, began displaying club insignia, and the 13 founding members formed the governing structure. Uh, again, a lot of this stuff is blacked out, and uh, that's why... It's obscene that these kind of memos are going around within police circles. Because this is the stuff they point to as the reason why they're being a bunch of pricks. This stuff right here. Could you imagine a Waco one? It talked about what happened in the 70s. Then it talked about some of the 80s stuff. Uh, the 86 indictment and conviction of the second national under RICO, which we all know RICO was originally supposed to be used against the out of the mob, but now it's going to everything from freaking, uh, even a civil RICO case, which we just seen. And as you just see, most of this report, and it's, again, it says limited official use, law enforcement sensitive, the National Drug Intelligence Center, that it's mostly blacked out. And this is the kind of stuff that they used in Freddie Angolo's case. He was a former national president of the Pagans, and he is doing time right now on a Kaufman's murder where they actually put up the pagans as the defendant and not him they use the club against him and this is the kind of stuff jurors probably seen was all this blacked out stuff like it is so important that we can't let the general public know this and the next thing you know the general public saying well wait a second here if it's all blacked out it must be serious if they were presented this with evidence. Dirty tricks. Dirty tricks, if you will. Now, they start off this incident right here. We all seen the video. We all agree, stupid shit. A biker sat parked next to a pump in a Newark gas station when a burly man wielding a metal batch approached from behind. The first blow, one of many more to come, struck the back of the biker's head. Now, he was hitting and kicking him because he was a Hells Angel Motorcycle Club associate. And you know what? That's kind of an example if you supporters out there are wearing support merchandise and don't know what the hell you're doing, what territory you're in. This could very well happen. It's just no joke. Uh, but they started off this report with that incident. And then it said at another end of the state on a June 9th near a year prior, military-like operation unfolded at the Gloucester uh, Sports Bar when more than two dozen pagans fully decked out in gang colors and uh, wearing black skull bandanas, uh, they went inside the bar for against a rival club. Now, 
the pagans were given an opportunity to go to this commission, but they claim the fifth with is the right thing to do. Because no matter what they would have said, it would have been used against them any damn way. So why say anything? Good point. Now, the commission goes on to say they found violent and disturbing incidences like those detailed what above. And again, these reports are going to be available in the description box. That way you guys can click it and go read it yourself and you can see the narrative that these commissions and law enforcement really put forward. They don't even hide their disdain for MCs. They don't. Now, again, this is a 22... Uh, What's it called? 22-page uh, report. It talks about uh, the early days, the resurgent, uh, how they're spread all over uh, the country now. It's all in here. Again, here's the origins and history on page 6. Uh, they talk about the same stuff that came out of that 2002. Let me pull it up here. Drug and Crime Outlaw Motorcycle Gang Profile. And this was a publication on the Pagans back in 2002. So basically it kind of seems like what the New Jersey Crime Commission did was just take from there. You know, why even try to hide your disdain when you can take all over, you know, from other sources and you don't have to do your homework? You know, let's skim through this just a little bit. It talks about a paradigm, sh uh, paradigm shift, and it talked about uh, Keith Cohn and Richter now, uh, what his plan was, I guess, according to them. It it's just hearsay. It is. It's really hearsay, and it says it's a well-organized structure. The funny thing about clubs is they're not too organized, okay? So when you start calling them organized crime and stuff like that, that's why people that actually know this kind of stuff and are just not guessing or putting assumptions forward, they laugh at you because we know it's not the case. It's actually craziness, and they got the membership rules in there, illicit activities that some people, again, this reads like something from a manual from a cop. And this is the stuff that they use against MCs. They give it this title, Pagan's MC. The rise of them in New Jersey or something. That's going to scare the general public. But for those in the general public that have actually had interactions with MCs are going to tell you God honest truth that most of the people they've ever met were good, hardworking guys. They weren't nothing like law enforcement described them to be. See, the law enforcement has a, a small, teeny bit of a problem right now. They're not looked at too good. Anything they say is suspect. Not only because of the shootings, but because of this kind of stuff, this kind of harassment that they put out on MCs. So, I really encourage you guys to go through this report before commenting on the video. I love the comments, I really do. But before you comment on something, go through these articles, or actually, pff, these memos, bulletins, whatever you want to call it. After you do that, then come back and comment because that's going to give your comment a fresh perspective and something that you're just not picking up from the title or somebody else's comments because I do believe our subscribers really do do their research and they're not going to be like somebody out there or somebody else that just go on to the bandwagon 
I'm going to be heading over to MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com with China Dow, or you can listen to us on the Zeno app over on Zeno FM. Fun show, man. We usually go an hour over there. Don't forget to like, subscribe to this video, man, and pass us around. It really helps us out. I'll see you then.